So it's 10 a.m. So let's just kind of get started. Um, I just wanted to share a couple things because there's a lot of people that are going to be coming on this that don't normally come on uh, to our mastermind group. And I just wanted to, first of all, welcome everybody. But more importantly, this is our top producer mastermind group, or we call it our billion dollar mastermind group, because the panelists, we only sold $1.7 billion of real estate, I think it was last year. So um, I used to think that I knew something, <laughs> but <laughs> once I got into this group a couple of years ago, I learned something every single day. And so, um, uh, so anyway, and then, so <clears throat> I, and, and the other thing is, is with this link, you guys, you can get on this every single Thursday. This is not for EXP Realty or any company. It's brand agnostic. So you're welcome to come on anytime. So, um, I know people are just coming on, but I still think that we should just get started. So first of all, I just want to say welcome everybody for being here. Um, and before I get started and introduce my friend Debbie, I have been thinking and we've been talking with our team over the last really several months with the, all the NAR changes that today we are in the skills based business more than ever. And, you know, we don't just negotiate just to get listings. Now we have to negotiate with the buyers. We got to negotiate with the agent on the other side to get paid what we deserve. And I believe, and I know that the commissions that we earn are in direct proportion to the skills we have and the services that we provide our clients. And that's why I absolutely believe right now the number one skill that we all need to master in real estate to survive and actually thrive in 2024 and 2025 and beyond is the skill of negotiations. And this is why I brought my friend Debbie on. And so Debbie and I are going to focus today on helping you with your negotiating skills. And so uh, just a quick introduction. I'm so, so excited to see Debbie. Uh, my friend, my mentor, my coach, she started helping me and my team over 20 years ago. And she didn't just coach me, but she also coached my team. And I can tell you one thing for sure. I don't know much, but I know this one thing that I wouldn't be where I am today without your help, Debbie. So thank you so much. And the other thing about Debbie is there's a lot of coaches out there but she's the only coach that I've ever met that's also has sold over 3,000 properties herself. And she's made, what is it, 80, 90,000 one on one coaching calls? Oh, no, we're, we're way past 100,000. We just stopped counting. Oh, okay. We, we just stopped. We just stopped. <laughs> it was only 80,000 a few years ago. Now yeah, it's, like it's a lot. It's pretty yeah. much. Uh, so, so anyway, Debbie, first of people. all, I want to thank you. I know you're so busy taking your time to join our mastermind group. And really, since this group hears from all of us panelists and me as well on every Thursday, I'd like you to give us kind of your thoughts and the importance on negotiations and how it makes all the difference in agent success. And by the way, everybody, at the end, she's gonna we're gonna she's gonna give you a code to get a thousand dollar gift of her, um, the. Um, training yeah, and, and, and David, did, uh, did Jessica give you the link for that so that you can eventually pop that up in the chat box? Because we're not using a PowerPoint today, correct? Um, well, she said that she was going to put a slide together. Jessica was at okay. the end of this. Okay, but if then, not, I, I can we can get a link. Okay, okay. so so let, let's do this. Let me just um take a second here because I'm uh, and are you recording this also, David, for them? Yes. Okay, perfect. Let me just make sure if you give me one second, I'm going to make sure that Stephanie has Jessica getting that link to you. And that since we're not using a deck, she may have thought we were using a deck. So give me one sec and I'll be right back, guys. Okay. All right. Okay. And the other thing I wanted to say is since we are live on... Um, on, on exp so 
Um, Dre, you want to just share um, anything about that to the audience or anything, Dre? Hi. Um, yep. Yeah, so we're live on Facebook on Workplace right now. We go live every week. So if you can't make it on the Zoom, you could always go to Workplace and check out um, the recording on there. Yep. On the Tribe page. Okay, David, we're ready. All right, so they're going to get the link over to you. We'll pop that up. I'll tell you guys just briefly about why I did this negotiations course. I guess I thought of all the years that I've been in the real estate industry and all the awesome people like David. David, in fact, um, 13 years ago when I launched Forward Coaching, David was the first coach I hired. Unfortunately, he was so successful that he didn't have time for me anymore. <laughs> so sadly, I had to move his clients to another coach and, and we stayed very close since then. But I thought about all these awesome people that were facing what we really weren't sure. What is going to happen? You know, how is this going to impact our business? So I created this course and I thought, I'm going to sell it as a course in a couple of months at a thousand bucks. But I thought, right in this August, September time, I wanted to gift it to anyone in the real estate industry that might enjoy it, really kind of as my way of giving back, you know, to all the people that have helped me over the years. Some of you may know my business partner, Forward Coaching, Ben Kinney. Um, ben is a big guy on giving back, you know, win, make, give, and a lot of programs that he does. So it's kind of our culture, I guess you'd say. And I used to be Ben's coach, which is how we met. And about five years ago, Ben came to me and said, I'd like to be your business partner in Forward because I'm starting this crazy thing called Place and I'm going to need Forward to develop coaches for that. So that's how we got back together. So lots of cool people in my world. And that's why I thought I didn't want this course to be basic. You're going to notice it's not about how to do a buyer presentation or a seller presentation. You guys know how to do that. What fascinates me is really the art of selling and negotiation. You know, I started in the business at the age of 18 and actually thought I was going to go to college to be an attorney. My parents didn't have enough money. I realized I had to go my, my Sunday school teacher was a broker and said, come sell real estate for a year, make some money, then do real estate part-time, get your license. But I fell in love with real estate. I never looked back and never got my law license. But I did, with my broker's help, end up selling about 150 plus homes a year pretty consistently by about the age of 23. And I give a lot of credit to him because he was a master negotiator. And back in the day, we actually did all the negotiations face-to-face, -face, which I loved that. It wasn't so great for quality of life because we would be at a seller's house at midnight, you know, negotiating a deal. But it was like the real stuff. And David, you know, it was a little even slightly before your time in the business. So I don't know if you got to play in any of that, but... Do you remember we would sit? I, de I definitely and... remember that time. Yeah, we didn't yeah. even, you know, that's when we had our little book, right? If somebody yeah. wanted to see property, we had our book. And if you want to know anything about it, you got to come to me, right? You got to come to me. Yeah. We were the gatekeepers. Yeah. And we negotiated when we wrote a contract, we negotiated with the um, the listing agent and yes. the um, seller at the, we tried to sit down in their house and negotiate the, the deal. And I would have my buyers down the street in the car. I wouldn't yeah. tell the seller. I'd get that counter and I'd go, you stay right here. See, I, I see some nods. Some of you guys remember this, right? And you go running down the street and you go, sign it. Such urgency, right? I loved it, but it was a little exhausting. So we can have a little better quality of life now. So, and I was just thinking about every time there is a change in the industry. For example, when buyers and sellers could suddenly access information on the internet. Gosh, what was that, David? I'm trying to think of how many years ago, 20? I, I don't remember, right? We thought, we were told 
real estate agents would be a dinosaur. We would be gone in five years because they wouldn't need us. Well, clearly that was not the case. They still need us. In fact, Ben had some stats, and I think he got them from NAR, that 87% of homes sold last year, they had an agent involved. And then there was like 14% that went to, that worked with a builder. And then a small percentage maybe bought from a friend, you know, family member, could be a for sale by owner. So clearly we still have a job. So then with this NAR thing coming up, I was thinking, is it going to be devastating to the real estate industry? Or is it going to be a little bit like Y2K, where we woke up the next morning and nothing bad happened? And, you know, honestly, we really didn't know. So Ben and I were just talking last Friday. We both talked to hundreds of people a month. Ben's been on the EXP stage and many stages. You guys probably have met him. And we both said, wow, it went pretty smooth, right? It went pretty smooth. But what it does remind me of is a little bit about like back in the day where we're going to have to have a lot more interaction with the agents in the community, right? Because there's going to be a lot more conversations about seller concessions and helping get that buyer agent paid so he can put the deal together. So there's going to have to be a lot more collaboration. And one of the things I talk about in the negotiation course is that a true negotiator, they're not an aggressive bully. They're a masterful collaborator. They're the calm, cool head in the deal. And so you'll see modules on things like the DISC assessment and why it matters, how, how you need to assess the personality of those you're working with and adapt, but also understanding your own personality. I'm a 99D. David knows me well. I love to boss everything around, but that doesn't mean I get to do that all the time. So I have to tell myself to behave. And, and I think part of knowing yourself is knowing how to mold and adapt to the others on the other side of the table. One of the modules that I really love is the emotional intelligence um, EQ assessment. And many, so many of you guys have probably read the book, Emotional Intelligence 2.0. And if you have team agents, I really encourage you, have them watch this series. It might be a gentle way to say to them, hey, why don't you do your EQ assessment and let's sit down and take a look at your score. Because of course, the one score is being aware of how you impact others. The second score is being intuitive to basically read the room, right? Read, the, read that customer. And as we know, some agents are really not good at this at all. So I think to be a good negotiator, it really starts with, what are my strengths in my communication? What are my weaknesses? How, how aware am I? And you're all really smart people. So I don't doubt your ability to read the room and adapt. Sometimes I think we just get busy. We get on a roll, we're in, in the moment and we don't stop to think, you know, what is their personality style? What is their age? What is their culture? Like, wh what are their previous experiences that are bringing these limiting beliefs to the table? And just, I love thinking of it like a puzzle, which is why I actually launched Forward Coaching. I, I really didn't, I used to run the Mike Ferry organization for 13 years. I, I did a couple of leadership years um, at MAPS Coaching and I, and they're all fine, but that cookie cutter of everything is this way, this world is just not like this. I mean, look at you all. You're so vastly different, right? So if, the, if we look at the client that same way and say, puzzle, dump the pieces out, put those pieces together, who am I dealing with? What do I need to say? What do I need to do? Do they need more data? Do they need more relationship from me? To me, that's where the great negotiation begins. And have some of you read uh, 
Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. Have you read that, David? Oh, yeah, many times, and I use it in stuff all the time. Yes. Yeah, I love it. In fact, so many things that I grabbed from him that I talk about, and I, I mentioned and referenced them in the course. One of them, I remember when Chris said, when you're in a, in a negotiation situation, think of yourself as neutral, just flatline the emotions. And, and that includes not being so excited, right? Just flatline the emotion. Because when someone is nervous and they're making a big decision, there's a lot of tension, a lot of anxiety, a lot of thoughts bouncing in their head so when we go at it with this high energy or high pressure it or too many words or too aggressive of a tonality, it like blows a circuit. It just shuts them down. So his point is, he calls it the late night DJ voice. And I'm pretty sure if it kept terrorists from killing people, we might find it helps us, right, in dealing with those tough agents and people on the other side. So when you're negotiating your next tough deal, just think late night DJ voice. And when someone really pushes your button, makes you angry, and you feel your blood pressure rise, just think flatline on the heart monitor. And, and so who's this person? How do I control my reaction to them? How do I not add drama to this situation? And then when they're going crazy, and, and Chris actually says, if you think they're crazy, probably they're not. Probably you just don't understand them. Yeah. However, David, he hasn't met all of our clients. <laughs> I mean, there are a <laughs> few, right? There that are a few. <laughs> really difficult. Um, but he says, you know, when they're going nuts on you, one of the techniques he talks about that I love is called labeling. And I, I, I grabbed onto that. And that was one I was not familiar with. And I, I've been using it ever since. And how that would work is if somebody is just going crazy and and you know, Cam, they're saying, I can't believe you haven't got my home sold. This is ridiculous. You told me you were a great agent. I can't believe it. I'm so angry. And you say, you know, Mr. Seller, I can hear how angry you are. So that, that simple technique, just labeling it. He said, you'll notice immediately it will slightly begin to de-escalate that energy right? Because they're acknowledged. Like you get it. I made my point. So if there's a cool new technique to take away from here, think of labeling, think of late night DJ voice. And so that's some of the things we talk about in the negotiations course. Um, another great thought that I love is taking the sword on behalf of the client. See, sometimes we create this battle between the buyer and seller, and they've never met, but they begin to not like each other. Where I've noticed a lot of the problems come up are requests for repairs, right? Sellers still think it should be, they don't have to do a thing. Buyers are thinking, hey, I'm paying a lot. Rates are higher than they were before. I want these repairs done. And it becomes a battle. And I see agents all the time say, well, my seller said it's ridiculous and they're not about to do a single thing. Well, if I'm the buyer agent and I run back and say, this agent is such a jerk and the seller over the top ridiculous because what we're asking for is very reasonable, but they're saying they're not going to do it. What do you want to do? Guess what? I just created a whole bunch of drama, right? So I try to think, hmm, just the facts. So if I went back to my buyer and said, you know, it's a good home, they know it, and they feel they sold it to you at a fair price, and they feel that what we're asking is not something that they're willing to do. So 
it's about a $2,500 repair. If you would still like to buy the home, then my advice would be we go forward with the purchase and I'll help you find someone to do that repair when you close. See, I can deliver the facts without making everyone the bad guy, but what that agent maybe should have done, take the sword on behalf of the client, say to the other agent, you know, because my client came down significantly in the negotiation, and this is more of a cosmetic repair, I advised my client not to pay for the repair. So that way they don't hate the seller. It's all just keeping that drama at a minimum. And man, do so many agents that we all deal with love to fire up the drama, right, David? I mean, we see it every day. Yeah. So David, thoughts you want to add? No, I, I agree with all that. Um, I think that keeping the emotion out of it, keeping the drama out of it makes all the difference. You have a choice. You can escalate or you can de-escalate. Mm -hmm. The choice is yours. But you, and, and the thing is, is when you're talking to somebody that's, if you think they're unreasonable, then in your mind, you, you know, you start, you know, that's that drunk monkey thing, right? You start saying, oh, they're unreasonable. And then you dig in and it doesn't go anywhere. It always ends up in a bad outcome. Mm -hmm. I always say, you know, and, and worse is bring an ego into it. Right. So. Yeah. And you know, their communication skills is something sadly that's not taught to new agents, you know, and some of us who love sales, seek it out on our own and study it. Most agents never do, and probably many never will. But again, if you have agents on your team, my advice is have them do the disc, have them do the EQ, um, have them review their negotiation conversations with you. I even see emails sometimes. I help a lot of our clients who do luxury. David, they might negotiate an eight, 10, $30 million transaction. Um, Jennifer Lehu, I think you met um, at Douglas Elliman. She did an $83 million island sale and we worked on the negotiations. And often what they'll do is they'll send me their emails and they'll say, before I send this to the other side, can you please take a look at this and help me clean this up? What am I saying that I shouldn't say, you know, here? And what I normally see is too many words. That's what I normally see. Way too many words. Also, too much personal emotion running in the undercurrent of that message. So in the course, I actually also recommend, I think I do, a book called Simply Said. And that's a great book. Um, ben and I, it's one of our favorites. The author is Sullivan. And it's really about just improving by simplifying your words, the, the communication, both verbal, but also in email and text. And I think what's so scary about email and text is they can go back and they can read that over and over and over again. And, and they can take whatever tonality and apply to it. So if you're not careful, you might have had a whole different intention in your approach. But when they read those words, that tonality does not come across and they get offended. And then they read that over and over and over and over. And I think where Simply Said David applies to all of this NAR stuff, we need to not over explain this. I was actually talking to an agent 30 years in the business, and he said, let me practice what I'm going to say when I go out and meet with my buyers and sellers. I'm going to say, well, in the Midwest, there was this lawsuit that happened. And the reason the lawsuit happened, and he's going through this whole thing that's like 20 minutes long. And I'm like, stop it, <laughs> right? Number one, some people think this already got settled and has been a done deal for a while. Um, some people have no clue about it at all. Right. And the simpler we can make it without jargon, right? With no jargon, just 
you know, you may have heard there's some new rules around how real estate is conducted in the nation. And the great news is it now gives us lots of options and opportunities for me to guide you to make a decision that's right for you. So Mr. Seller, when it comes to real estate commissions, they are negotiable by law. As your listing agent, I charge a fee of X for my services. Then together, we decide what you want to do, if anything, in terms of concessions to make it attractive to a buyer because this will help them compensate their buyer agent. So let's walk through our options now. Like, just keep it simple. Okay. I loved hearing a little script, David. Uh, it was somebody, I wish I could remember his name to give him credit on a YouTube video. And he made a point that when a buyer calls and wants to see a home, they don't know anything about this. And if you start dumping on them, you're going to have to sign this contract with me. They're probably not going to do it. And he said, so I just say, hey, you know, let's set the appointment. And there's some new rules around real estate. So all I'm going to need to do is have you just sign a very simple agreement for me to show you the home. Because I'm that, you know, by law, now I must have that agreement to show you the home. And the great thing is you get to test drive me, see if you like me. If you don't buy that home and you'd like me to see others, then we can talk about next steps. So simply said, I think that's just a huge, huge piece of negotiations. Yeah, we're using a touring agreement. Okay. That basically says there's no obligation, um, but we'll show you this house. And then at that point, it's then it's the honeymoon stage, right? Right. That's the time that we get the opportunity to show what we do and what we do differently and how we're going to help them. Yeah. And I and I think that when you think about all of this that we've even just talked about so far, it actually takes a lot of stress out of the business and you can sell more faster if you can keep everyone calm. If you can connect and speak their language. Um, in NLP, there's something called convincer strategy. I love asking a seller on the phone as I'm setting that listing appointment. I'm curious, what are your expectations of the agent that you will hire or of the sales professional you will hire? Because what they give you will be a hot button for them. Well, I expect really awesome marketing. See, now when I go in on that presentation, I can tweak it a little to really focus on the marketing. Well, I expect really terrific communication. I can go in on that listing appointment and say, you know, let's talk about how we're going to connect and communicate together. They may not even remember they told me that, but I've made a note of it, just like I've made a note of what do they do for a living? What are the words they use? What do I think their personality style might be? So lots of high D people are CEOs or leaders. They use very short sentences. Um, they're a little harsh, a little blunt, and really kind of only they speak that way, right? A super high S person, amiable, they might be the one, David, that would say, David, can you come over at six o'clock and list my home? But but I don't want to interrupt your dinner. Is, is that okay? I can have a sandwich ready for you, right? No Heidi is going to do that, <laughs> right? You guys know what I mean. But I think that's where we miss, even in that initial first consult or listing appointment, showing up in our style and it's opposite. Like as a 99D, a 99S is like my kryptonite. So if you showed up at my house and said, I'm so excited to be here. I made you some cookies and I brought you the recipe because everyone loves them. Oh, are those your daughters? Oh, they're adorable. Oh, I love, love, love your home. I'm already just screaming in my mind, get out right? And that could be a really good agent. 
but that style does not work for me. But if oh. that agent isn't paying attention, we can have a break in rapport. And sometimes those sellers don't even know our buyers why they didn't pick you. They just know it didn't feel right. Right. I, I have this vision when I try to talk to people that I'm we all sit, we're all standing in a box. Mm -hmm. It's our box. It's the way we like to talk, the way we like to communicate. But when we're talking to other people, we have to not get out of our box. We need to jump out of our box mm -hmm. and into their box. You know, as a high D, you want if if I said to you, Debbie, Debbie, we've seen three homes. This is the right one. You know it and I know it. Buy the damn house. Yep. What would you say? I probably, as a high D, if I like the house, I'd probably say, fine, but David, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. But, but if I'm a high S, that's going to scare that. But if you that said that, yeah, that's 18% of the population, right? right? So that means 82% of the time, if I said anything like that, I'm going to repel the other people, right? So, you know, knowing the disc and, you know, you can sometimes tell people, you know, when, when you find out what type of work they do, you can pretty much tell who they are. You can, you can see how they speak. You can tell how they dress, how they communicate. And when we can, you know, I always say people like people that are like themselves. So if we can be more like them, then they like us better and they do more business with us. Yep. And everything just flows a lot more smoothly. So lots, lots of fun modules and the negotiations course on that. And I think it's the being, you know, consciously competent right now of being really aware, we got to use all our amazing skills. Um, eventually, you guys will get just like a second nature with all the new forms and all the new stuff. And the first day that I got the car forms in my hand here in California, and I I looked at this big stack and I'm like, oh, this sucks. This is so bad. But then I got up at four o'clock in the morning and I started reading through them. And I thought, you know, today's consumers are really savvy compared to 30, 40 years ago. They don't want to be told what to do. They want options. They want to engage in the conversation. And the car listing form even says, um, for example, are you going to allow photography and video? If a buyer writes a letter, do you want to see it? And here's the pros and cons of that and the risk. Like they make decisions all along the way which David, that made me think of major close on a minor issue, right? So you're going down all these things, getting their engagement, and then you just go to the bottom line. So all we need to do next is simply sign here and you and I will get to work together. And, and I just, it felt like this, we can really be so professional, almost like, like that attorney, right? Sitting at that table, going through their options, um, we have some Goldman Sachs advisors because of Ben's path to take place public. Um, so there's a Goldman Sachs team I get to go to board meetings and listen to and spend time with. And they predicted that by the end of this year, 40% of agents potentially would leave the business. Now, they said it would be those who are newly licensed and not that serious the dabblers, or potentially those who are a, what you'd call an elderly agent. That And David, that's like, you know, they're like 90, right? Certainly not our age, right? <laughs> but elderly. Older people. <laughs> and they've been saying, hey, I'm done. I'm almost done. One more year and I'm done. And they may choose to be done. So even though you think about that, they don't do a lot of units, but you take 40% of licensed agents, if that comes true, they, they suck a lot of units out of our markets that'll now be there for all of you. So it's it's going to be an interesting next few years ahead. Now, could this ultimately erode the buyer side commission over time, especially potentially in luxury transactions? You know, it could. I think that's where it's really going to be important to really make sure you can define your value prop 
um, use your reviews as the proof of what you achieve. Oh, I did a webinar not long ago with a guy named Nick Waldner, and he you can Google him and find some YouTube videos on how Nick and his team have achieved over 1,000 five-star Google reviews, and he breaks it down very clearly how he did it. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the proof, those reviews, that we accomplished the goal, we're worth the fee, and, and therefore, this is what we charge. So I do think it's an important time to beef up your value prop, how you sell the sexy of what you do. That's all part of the negotiation, right? And then the proof is those great reviews and testimonials. And, you know, when buyers now no longer think of it as just free to work with anybody, it'll be interesting to notice that they get maybe a little bit more selective in their choice as an agent, right? I agree. The The crazy thing is on our team meeting on Thursday, we were looking through our under contracts and we were looking at what the commission is on both sides. And ironically, Debbie, I think we have 13 or 14 properties under contract from like a million to 7 million right now. And all but two of them were at 3%. And the other two were at two and a half. And and so we have, it's kind of crazy because I thought the same thing that um, the higher the price range, the, the, the harder it is or the, the more compression commission compression. But in reality, I think what's happening is the people that are more sophisticated that have sold five, 10, 20 homes, they're like, this is just how we've always done it. And it's not, not an issue. And, and the other thing I, um, that I'm really proud of with our team, whether people are that joined our team in the last year or two, they, they're learning the skills. And I think, well, I, I have a term that I'm saying is the, are the NAR changes going to take you out? Mm-hmm. Or are they going to take you to the top? Mm-hmm. Right. If somebody is offering, so we had a deal, the seller was offering two and a half percent. It was on a $3.2 million uh, property. They came in, they wrote a good offer, but they wrote in, they want 3%. We took it to our seller and they said, man, this is a really good offer. And I used the joke. It was like pushing over a one-year-old, right? Because it was like, okay, it's a really good offer, but they want 3% and, and the seller's like, okay, great, we'll do it, right? Um, and what we're finding is it's the first time buyers and the people kind of at the lower end that we have to um, fight a little bit harder for. Right. Uh, but it doesn't matter, no matter where you are, whether you're selling 400, 800, 4 million, 20 million, 32 million, like our our highest sale last year. It doesn't matter. It's all in the negotiations and what you do. You know, we have we have 700 five-star reviews and that helps us. We we do the other things, but more importantly, we're working on our team really hard on showing the true value of what we do whether we're working with a seller or with a buyer. And um, I think we have to continue to do this. I also saw, um, I was at an event, 43% of the agents in the United States sold one home or less in the last year. And when you think about that, but that's still, you know, what is that? That's what, 600,000 agent or 600,000 deals. Mm -hmm. Um, And the thing is, is all of these new changes, that's why I say, are you going to let this take you out? Are you going to take it to the top? Mm -hmm. And if we do this, if we get good at negotiating and we understand this and we know how to talk to our clients, the buyers and the sellers, we are going to win. And I can tell you, I think, you know, there's always been the 80-20 rule. I actually think now it might be more like the 90-10, that 10 of us are 10% of us all, the people on this, we'll do uh, we're going we're gonna to do vastly better 
and most of the others. And when it gets harder, that's when people, you know, it's not like you needed to have a real estate license and a heartbeat to sell a house or buy, right. you know, right now. So, well, and it's funny, they've been saying that for a few years that it was going to shift to the 90 10. I don't think they knew the SNAR thing was coming, but it's probably the one that brought that forward faster. And for those of you who have a team or recruiting for a team or a brokerage, this is such a great opportunity. The agents at large out there, they're so, whenever I do a webinar that's on negotiations or scripting around the NAR objections or changes, it's massive registration. So the team leaders and brokers that we coach here at Forward, we're encouraging them, do some mastermind events, do Zoom trainings, invite the agent community in your local market. Because when you're really a star in your market, often they might like to work with you, but they're intimidated by you. But if they can come to a Zoom, an event like this, and they can see, wow, this is really a great person. You know, Bridget is so cool and I, I love her. And then at the end, Bridget simply says, well, you know, if you have additional questions or you'd like to find out what does it look like to become a partner on my team, just contact me. We'll get together. Like it's such an easy way. You know, David, I don't even know if you know this, but years ago I, I was selling and I had to launch an office for my broker in Seal Beach, California. And he said, I need 140 seasoned agents in this office in a year. Highly competitive market. I'm like, crap, I don't have time to do this one by one. So that's exactly what I did. Mastermind events, um, real estate education in a, a neutral venue, often sponsored by affiliates, you know, and they participated. It was a great way to fill my list with potential candidates. And, and I think a lot of the brokerages didn't handle this very well. They didn't. It, in fact, I heard of one, I won't name the company. And it's really shocking that one manager told their agents, don't worry about this. It's going to go away. That's what he told them in the 1st of August. Don't worry about this. So there's a lot of disruption right now, which means there's a lot of opportunity for you guys to go out there and recruit for your team and, and grab some really good people and then teach them the skills of how to sell. Please give that course to anyone you want in your world. And David, I popped up my email if they want to get the link for the disc. Um, did Jessica send you? You have the link for the, the course to pop up there for them. And I actually, guys, am so fine with you um, taking it and we'll do we'll call, what we'll call R&D, rip off and duplicate. So if you like any of the modules and you want to take them and go right out and teach it verbatim, feel free, be my guest, you know, use it uh, to whatever advantage that you possibly can. Um, have you found that link, David? Um, Jess should have sent it to you. Oh, uh, so I, if you'll check for that. Yeah, so check my email. Well, and uh, let me what? tell you, everybody. So when Debbie said she wanted to do this, she asked me to do one of the sessions and I asked her, I said, Debbie, what do you want me to focus on? And she goes, well, whatever you're doing, that's making a difference. Mm -hmm. So in the course that Debbie did, one of the sessions, I think it's the, the last session, it's on essentially, it, it's giving you a lot of examples on how to work with a seller, giving you examples of how to get a buyer's agency agreement signed, how to work with the buyers, how I think one of the most important things that we've never had to do is, you know, if somebody is in your marketplace is, you know, you're bringing an offer and they're at 2%, what did you do for the last 20 years? You just said, okay, I don't like it, but I'll take 2%. Mm -hmm. And that's because you don't feel that you're worth more, right? And whether it's Oh, oh, two bananas. I'm sorry. We're, we're, it's two bananas, but I'm hungry today. I want three bananas, right? 
Well, now we have the opportunity to negotiate three bananas or maybe four bananas if we want, right? So, so, if they, so by the way, on that thought, David, it may mean that on your buyer side, you actually can make more, right? Because now you're not hostage yeah. to mm -hmm. what a weak agent was able to get on that listing agreement. So if David can't find the link for the course, guys. No, nope, I have it right now. Okay, I was going to say, oh, don't worry, because right. you've got my email. Um, but we have a couple of minutes, so I don't know if anyone wants to share their best exciting negotiation skill or a great book on this topic or even an insight on something that's working as they roll out all these new NAR changes. So, David, should we open it up to the group? Yeah. So right now we have the panelists that are on this group. So um, let's let's start with them. And if there's anybody that has a question from the audience, please feel free to put it into the chat. And I just put the link for the course. So if you click on that link, everybody, then that's how you can, everybody can get on this. And please, there is no, there is no st strings attached to this at all. When you go in, it's on its own little learning management portal. So it has all of the recordings and you're not limited to how fast you go through them or if you want to jump around. So it makes it easy. And again, feel free to forward the link, but just write down my email. So in case you have any problem, then you'll know how to reach back back out to me. Yeah, and, and there's, there's a hundred or so people on this. Okay. Also live on Facebook through EXP World. So anybody out there, you're welcome to take, to, to go to this link. And this link is not just for you. This is for the people that you know in the real estate business that you want to help. So, you know, think of it from the, don't think of it like from the scarcity mentality, everybody. It's the abundance mentality. We help other people and then it comes back to us. Well, and, and selfishly, we're going to be negotiating with these other agents much more intensely. So let's make them a little bit better, right? Um, so Casey asked the question, what's the method we're referring to when we say high D, high S? So the DISC assessment is a tool that was created some years ago by someone named Marston. And it's not like an, an IQ test. There is no right or wrong. It's just an understanding of the components of our personality. Sometimes people will say I'm a high D as we did today, but, but David and I are not just a high D. See, we're each a combo of four styles. And you'll see lots of assessments out there and they call them different things, but it really comes down to a driver, direct uh, pushing for action, an influencer, which would be a real like charmer, um, very flamboyant out there, has to be, you know, the one that shines in the crowd. Um, S is very steady, very calm, very amiable. They want to be low key. They don't want to be in the spotlight. They, they don't want to upset the apple cart, right? They want everything to be steady and C is cautious or analytical. So we're all a combination of all four. But when you do the DISC assessment or you have your team agents do it, my advice is to tell them, don't overthink it. There's no right or wrong. It should only take about 10 minutes. Then when you guys use my link to do that, you'll immediately get back a 25 page report all about you. If your agents take it, go over that report with them. I really like pages 13 to 21 because that's the nitty gritty of the strength and the weaknesses. And you can look at those strengths and say, how do we lean more into those areas to get more business? The weaknesses, how do we correct that? Because that might be getting in the way. And, and if you are a coach or a coach to your team, page 19 is amazing. It's the crib notes to working with that person. It gives you the do's and the don'ts of how to speak to them. So use that link as much as you would like. If it expires, just go to the forward coaching 
main website and I always have it there. You can access it for free. So endlessly it's it's there for you. Okay. All right. Any panelist questions? Um, otherwise I'd like to answer um, Uma's question. Go right ahead. Anybody? Okay. I so add okay. some Debbie, first of all, thank you for uh, reminding me of my tonalities coming from Philly and uh, being a D and a flaming eye at times. Yes. Um, you know, and understand that it's tough to be a, an SNSC and, and to be a chameleon. Um, and and I believe in the DISC all the time. And if you have never taken it, everybody, you got to do it because you learn more about your clients, you learn more about yourself that you're losing 50% of your business out there because you're not working with them the way they want you to work with them. You're working with them the way you want to. You can give yourself a 50% raise just by working the way they want you to, which is huge. And I just wanted to say thank you for getting the tone, bringing it down. Um, it's the, the Delilah voice. It drives me crazy when yeah. I hear that on the radio. But I'm like, oh, would you just get going? I know. But you want to say, so so the house. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm J-Lo. Let's get loud. I get exactly. it. I gotta, I'm here. I got to bring it here. I know. Just it. bring it but, here. Uh, I yeah, just wanted you, to say And thank you nailed you. it. Because that actually in NLP is a statistic that... 50% of the people you meet, if you just roll the way you normally do, to use David's word earlier, you will repel them. You will actually repel about. them. Um, but I know I'm I'm with you and I have to tell myself, you know, flatline the emotions, late night DJ voice. Yeah. So, so <laughs> an example, Jana. So if I said, you know, Craig, absolutely, I understand that this is not the offer you were hoping for. And when you think about it though, we've had 2,500 online previews. We've had only five physical showings and only one willing to put something in writing. So based on that, wouldn't it make sense to negotiate? You know, and I could use some other NLP, but it's just calm. Because remember, his mind is going, bing, 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 you know, screw these people. My house is worth more. She's not fighting for me. All that stuff that we know goes on. And we're just calm, right? So I, I appreciate notice it. everybody how when Debbie said that, she smiled, right? That's yeah. important too. So, okay, Uma, so you asked, you got to get a buyer's agency sign before you meet them. So what we're training our agents to do is we're saying, so Mr. Buyer, this is this is the the agreement that um, and it's at three percent. But I really want you to understand something. My job is to help you negotiate the very best deal, the very best terms and help you throughout the entire prop process. And what we normally charge for that is three percent. Now. I, what I do want you to know is that you will never pay me a dime unless we have a conversation about it. But what I, my job is to negotiate the best deal for you, but I also want to negotiate with the listing agent and the seller so that I get paid. So you don't have to pay me anything. Mm -hmm. But so what we need is to have this signed at 3%, but I can tell you, you will never pay me without knowing and if for some reason I can't negotiate down to two or two or two and a half or whatever it is, then I'm going to give you my word that we are going to change this form when we write the contract to whatever that number is to two and a half. How's that sound? So, David, a couple of things I picked up there I wanted just to point out. If you notice when David said our fee is three percent, he just kept going. Here's the key. If you say your number and stop talking, they're always going to fill the silence with an objection, right? So that's a deadly trap, but you just kept moving forward. And one of the things I often say, whether it's a buyer or seller is, you know, here's the great news. All we're doing today is we're beginning the process. And to David's point, you have complete control of this process. Because mm -hmm. as we move forward and negotiate, you're not going to sign anything that is not acceptable terms to you. And whatever you do sign, I don't earn a penny 
unless I can successfully close this transaction for you. So you're still the boss, you're still in charge. There's a lot of negotiations that are going to happen. And, you know, as David said, if you want to say, if we get stuck in a negotiation and it's a home you love and I can't earn the 3%, I am absolutely open to being flexible and reasonable to make that deal work for you. So let's just sign the agreement today at the 3%. Let me get to work and do my best work and we'll go from there. And you smile and hand them a pin, right? So mm -hmm. yeah, just you didn't pause after you said the 3%. And I think that's so uh, important. And a lot of times people do, they throw it out there and it's just like, okay, now the buyer's going to fill that silence. Yep, Cam, they're okay. gonna fill so it with an objection. So like, I didn't even notice, I just do this naturally, right? Because I practice it so many times. But the term that I use, gang, is when you're saying something, you don't want to open the objection door, right? And that's no different than, you know, like Russ is, uh, you know, gets a lot of Zillow leads like I do, right? So, hey, Russ, I know she wanted to see 123 Main Street. I'm a bell or, or I'm your Zillow premier agent. And um, I'd like, you said you wanted to see 123 Main Street. I can show it to you a day at, at three or at four. Does that work for you? Or is that, does that work, right? Because if you pause, when you talk to somebody like that, then they're like, well, you know, I, I noticed that picture in the basement in the closet. It didn't have any shelves in it, you know, or whatever the objection is. But if you say it, you have to say it with confidence and you have to say it um, in one statement and calm and kind of tell them how it is. So like Debbie said, or I'll say it again, don't open the objection door. Yeah. So if he said, we work for 3%. And then I said, we work for 3%. Oh, David, I forgot to ask you. You guys got a permit on the pool, right? That's called a pattern interrupt. Pattern interrupt. <laughs> yeah. David, I know we're close to out of time here. And I have another webinar right yep. after this. So maybe you're going to stay on. But I just wanted to thank you guys for joining us. I know you're... Time is valuable, David. Thank you for inviting me. I hope you enjoy the course. Love to hear your takeaways. That's always super fun for me to hear what you got out of it. So David, I'm going to turn them over to you. Okay. Thanks again, Debbie. Yes. I so much appreciate Have you. Have a great day. Thank All you right. so much. Amazing content. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Any thoughts, anybody? We got two minutes left. I love it. I love how we want to make sure that we use less words, stay in control of the conversation like David showed. Um, the other, I just had one more tip when you're talking about stating your fee is 3%, you can let them know that is market standard and that you can negotiate down from there, but you cannot negotiate up. So we are going to ask for market standard concession rate from the seller. And that is my job to get that for myself. So that's uh, just my tip on that. Everything else was unbelievable. Thank you guys for putting this together, David. Much love. Thank you guys. And uh, glad to be part of this. All right. I got yeah. one more thing to add there with the commission structure asking for that extra percent because I just did this personally on a deal we did from a referral. We are doing all our buyer broker agreements at 5% now. They're 5% just flat and like, we're telling people we negotiate, we get as much as we can from the seller and that's what we're going to be paid. We have not had the problem of a 0% agent or a 0% you know, cook, uh, concession. Now with 5%, it allows us to negotiate a lot harder and we can work our way down. So I think that like everything, you tell them how it is, you give them the expectation, you set it up from the start and you're able to capitalize that on just like uh, Debbie was saying there, you don't let them give you objections you handle the objections up front and if you're if you're confident and you have your stuff in order and you present it that way they have no problem signing it okay cool guys that was incredible um yes great Ross, stuff this is, thank you for putting that this together is, yeah this is recorded um and we <laughs> will have access to this um dre when will we have this the the recording of this, everybody that wants it.
And by later this afternoon, it takes um, a little time to buffer and, and download. So it'll be available later this afternoon. It is available on Workplace right now. Yeah, so it's on Workplace, but is the only other way to obtain it basically through the like the Tribe University? Tribe University or um, it's a YouTube page. Oh, okay, perfect. The YouTube page. Yes. Great. Yeah. All right. Well, Have thanks. A great week, everybody. everybody. See you next Thank week. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Yes. Craig. Yes. Love you. He is. Love you. So Bye. get that, uh, those swings down. Or uh, down. less swings. You want less swings in golf. I'm a golfer. I, I actually uh, do know what I'm saying, but said it backwards. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you. Okay. Bye. Thank you, David. Bye.